Right, we've got a special here. This is a Marvel or a, a Wolverine X-Men version of Ripping, Tearing and Shredding. So I'm enjoying this series immensely. I love the effect of what this does. Um, I was, it's, it's really just a matter of what can you come up with next? What rips, tears and shreds? You know, I've been asking if you've got any comments that you can leave and say this would be a great idea. Luckily, I came up with a few ideas recently and I thought, oh yes, why have I not done this one before? So Wolverine, classic ripping, tearing, shredding, um, and some other superheroes coming up in the next few weeks, right? So it's gonna be under this kind of Marvel X-Men superhero special. So yeah, great effects obviously used in these films, not claiming to be able to um, you know, do anything quite on that scale at the moment, but nice effect as you can see on the screen. So this is using cloth, believe it or not, um, and tearing like we've done in the other videos, but there's a few extra bits in here to give this feeling of like melted metal, you know, rather than just cloth blowing around the wind and getting cut. So this, there's a, there's a few things we need to do to set this up. So I'm not going to go and try and recreate this in this video. I'm going to include these files, the one you see on the screen of um, so one I did for a short recently um, of the Wolverine claw coming through the material. I think this has been cached, so you'll be able to see this kind of play out here. Look, as you can see, it all coming through the screen there. So I'm going to include that on my gum road below. Um, you can put any message in here that you like. You know, I've put 10 million views in 90 days because I know how difficult this is. That's why I did that. Um, you put any message you like. You know, this could be used for promotions about slashing prices. You could have your company logo in there or your prices in there and have this claw slashing thing coming across it. So I think this could be used in lots of ways. Um, this effect, when I show you it, could also be used in other areas, like wood and tarmac, um, concrete. The list goes on. You know, it's not just cloth. You know, there's lots of things we can do now with some of these effects. So let's get on with it. Um, like I say, these these files are all below in a link. If you want to grab these, it's got it's got the lighting. It's got. Um, a little bit more detail in in there to, to how we how we get this effect so let's start with a new scene and i'll show you how we get to this but um just a little bit quicker a little bit quicker version right then start the new scene so what we need then is we need a plane we're going to start with a plane and let's turn it up on like the x axis let's go for ground shading with lines now let's add in, let's go about 100 by 100. Okay, now let's get um, another object that we can use to cut this material. So let's use a pyramid and let's just kind of squash it down a little bit like this just so it's only, just so it's a very thin wedge like that. And let's take this side down as well, just so we've got this little sharp kind of blade thing here. Okay, and then we can spin that up on end a little bit like that. So that's our that's our cutting blade. So let's call that you know let's call that blade. Um, and then this is actually going to be metal rather than cloth, right? So we're going to be doing this thing where it looks very much like the Wolverine cutting through the metal. So if we lift the blade up, so it'll actually be you know cutting down from the top. You know we can actually well, maybe we. Do it a little bit more like the Wolverine thing. Let's actually spin it around 180 degrees. And this then can come through the material like that. Okay. So what we can let's just keyframe this for now. Let's just get this um working as a little animation. So let's put it in. Let's let's go to about let's have like 200 frames. Uh let's go to about 30 frames, which is one second and let's hit another keyframe so it doesn't move for the first second then for the next second or less than that because it's a very quick blade stabbing action uh, we bring the blade in like that and then we keyframe it and then we wait for a bit 
so about there and then we keyframe it again so it's basically going to pause it's going to stab through the metal it's going to pause slightly again and then after the pause it's then going to travel fairly quickly and just drop it let's just drop it straight down for now and then just make sure it's still poking through and then hit another keyframe so to show you what that looks like it's paused it stabs through and then it comes down so let's um let's actually just have that come through a little bit more so it's like that I mean, it doesn't really matter for this. It's still going to give you the effect, so that's fine. So that's that's the that's kind of the action it needs to have. Is it just comes in, stabs through, and then pulls down the paint. Right. So that's what we're after. That's the animation in place. Now then, what do we do to make this look like or similar to what we had in in, in the example at the start, the, the Wolverine one? Right. What we need to do then is on this um, on this plane, we need to use the wonderful new addition the thicken now this is not like cloth surface it acts quite differently and i'll do i'll show you some of the features it has now so if we um if we hold down alt and then click on thicken which is in here it then obviously straight away adds a thickness to this at here at 10 centimeters right let's have that say about two we don't want the we don't want the metal to be super thick about there and we've got quite nice control here over the shell which is actually this thickness here and the start cap and end cap which is the, the front face here is the start cap and then the back is the end cap that means we can drop textures materials good stuff on, the, on these different faces quite quickly and it looks great and we can add subdivisions to the thickness that's happening as well so if you have a look on the end here we can add in some subdivisions and that really comes into play when we start to cut through this and we and we have that come into play at that point so right let's let's start doing that now so we have thicken we also let me just show you a few things before the, you know before we add in some of the, the the bits that we need here i'll just show you what happens if we don't add them in so if we just go for um let's add cloth dynamics now so we go on metal we right click we go and add cloth to this um now we're gonna have to turn on tearing which is here look cloth tearing um but obviously if we just leave this as on and cloth tearing this is not going to work we need to use vertex maps here and we need to have the blade actually control in this so let's add now again i don't like to add the, the the sorry the collider i like to add a cloth tag and pin it down the reason for that is well it seems to interact better and also we've got more control over the thickness of space around things if we use this so we can put this in at like 0.2 and probably the same with the metal as well we can put them in a lot smaller distances so when they when they interact with each other there's no gaps around them it's a lot it's a lot closer around the object so at the moment then we've got cloth on the blade but we've put um, pins down onto it so it's going to hold it down and not act as cloth but on the the metal surface at the moment we've just got it um kind of flying around in the wind okay so if you press play that it just drops out of the scene now i'd quite like to keep the gravity in the scene because as some of these pieces are cut they can just fall straight down i don't think i want them hovering in, in the air i want them to drop you know as, as pieces are cut out so how do we stop this from falling and have gravity on at the same time right so we're going to use vertex map so let's go to metal let's right click and use other tags other tags and go to vertex map so it goes red and what we're going to do is reference this blade on the vertex map so we click on it it's got, it's got use fields here already look if it's not you just click here where it says use fields and then what we're going to do is we're going to reference the blade as as 
as what it's asking for here, right? So if we put in blade, then we click on it and say, um, the surface, we're going to have a radius of about one or two. Let's try two for now. So what that means is when the blade interacts with this surface, let me just show you that happening. We've got the animation on. Ah, I can't show you that because this is dropping out the scene. So what I need to do first is I need to go to the cloth tag and I need to add 100% with forces, but I need to put in the vertex map and that will hold it in place and it'll only become active on the vertex map and move this, this cut seam about. So it's not gonna move the actual piece around. So if I just press play again, and let's wait for that to go in. Right, so let's put on the vertex map so you can see what's happening. So as you can see, there is a yellow reference point around there now, you see? That is what the vertex map has referenced, and it's saying that this part is now gonna be cloth, and it's now going to um, not be pinned down like the rest of it. This is going to be the moving part, right? So this is really good for metal because we don't want this moving around in the wind. We don't want any ripples in it. We, we want it to be solid like metal. And then the blade at the point where that's penetrating this material, that is what's gonna be moving around, only that bit. And that is done by referencing the blade on the surface here that in mode as a radius of two. Now, if you bring this up to say eight, you'll see there's a much bigger influence around it so really we want to keep this as small as possible we could even go to one okay so it's just a very small let's just see what we get there there we go look and then this will move down okay you can see what it's doing already it's only using reference to that vertex map to turn it into the cloth okay so the rest of it's going to be solid now, what else can we do? Let's, let's improve this. So we've got we've got a start, that's not too bad. So what can we do to make it look a lot more like the, the Wolverine version where it comes through and it looks like it's kind of splitting around and it's very soft metal looking. Right, so what we need is we need to use a volume mesher for this. Okay, so we go on here, put in the mesher, put thicken, put this whole thicken and metal bit under the, the, the mesher and now the secret ingredient we need to go on to these deformers and when we need to find smoothing and then we add smoothing under the mesher right so it smooths it all out we now need to add in another bit to this we because um, at the moment it's only going to reference around the blade where this vertex map is we want, we want it to reference the whole travel okay so if it's starting up at the top and it comes through here and then as it moves down, you'll see it's sticking with the blade. Okay, there's bits breaking up here, it's starting to work, but we want this to be staying yellow everywhere where it's entered and where it travels to. So what we do is we go to the vertex map tag here, and then we go to this menu and we go on to um, decay, okay? And then we turn that up 100% to say that's the effect strength. So what that will do, let's just max that actually, so it, it adds it on. If we just come back and play that from this point, what it should do now is keep the yellow, you see? So that reference now, now don't worry about it traveling a bit strangely, that's to do with the thicken. If we turn that off, it's sort of, that is what's actually happening. But for some reason, the thicken kind of shows, shows it in odd places. So if we turn that off for now, I'll just show you it this is what's happening look. It's keeping that seam. So wherever it's stabbed through, it's keeping that kind of damaged line. Okay, um, so that's the first step, or, or not the first step, but that's, that's that's an important step for this working. So as it, at the moment look, you can see it's not, it's kind of like sealing back up again. So we need to go to the smoothing and we just need to play around with some of these, these settings. So if we take off the stiffness and then we add a few more bits in there, you'll see it starts to change. Now, we can actually do a little bit more with opening this up. At the moment, it's like you say, it's not 
it's kind of going through and then it's not really opening up straight away. It's kind of pulling. We need to do that in the cloth tag itself. So if we go to cloth and we go to surface, we need to add things in here that we haven't got our vertex maps in any of these places. So in bendiness, we could add the vertex map into there. So it's only looking at it in there. We can adjust the target length, which is quite a nice effect. So if we bring this down to say 70% and the material tries to shrink, we can add our vertex map into that. And let's have a look. Yeah, the tear in itself, we want to bring that down to 100. 150 means it wasn't tearing straight away. So that needs to be 100 and then reference the vertex map in there. If we change the tear guiding to 90, it tends to rip in a much better line. Uh, what else can we add in? Mix animation's got it in. Um, I think that might be it. So let's just give that another go. So it's, it's penetrated through and now it rips down. And as you can see, it's now referencing this tearing guide there's obviously a few little things we need to change but it's looking at the at this um, tear vertex map now at 100 percent okay so it's tearing straight away and if we just look back on the vertex map look we've got well without the thicken yeah it's just it's it's bringing that down lovely so yeah these pieces are now starting to work so the smoothing now is i mean look at that it just opens it up like a piece of material, doesn't it? It's, or, or like, well, more like metal in this case, because it kind of, it's kind of melting the edges. Okay, so you just want to play around with the iterations here in the smoothing tab until you get something that starts to look good. Now, if we go back to cloth and we can say target length, maybe we can, you know, it's going, can we go to fifty? What's that going to give us? Let's see what that does. As the blade just waits and then as it comes down yeah I think that's quite nice yeah it's quite nice it's a little bit smooth um, let's just think if we go the other way would that give us a better effect you just got to try these sometimes once you've got these it kind of working you then need to just just do a bit of fine adjustments you know until you get things looking just how you want them because you know th this is all subjective it's all you know it might look good for what I'm doing but if you're doing something a little bit different to this you might want it to not be as smooth or you might want it to open up more and you just want to change these settings as you go along so now we can look at smoothing and we can probably add more smoothing or a bit less if you want it to look a little bit more like like the metal effect which is not totally smooth it's and then we could even take the effect down a bit like this so that's um that's the effect of that. Let's just keep it running down and just see what happens to that blade. So if you see all these little pieces there, some of them are staying though, aren't they? Let's just have a look at our, uh, yeah, we've got gravity on. Um, let's have a look at the mix animation. That's a hundred. Now let's just try, we could bring that down to see if that's going to give us a better effect if we take that the strength down a little bit it probably we're getting bits dropping a bit more let's just go a little bit more with that okay maybe we can come right down see what we get I actually want the pieces to kind of drop a bit because we've got gravity on. Okay. Yeah. It's quite like that. It's kind of moving down a bit. Now, some other things I want to show you, um, which are, are in this thicken, which is really nice. Okay. So we've got position here at 0%. If you have a look at this from the side view, look what happens when you move the position. Ah, I was going to say, we probably want to run that with the vertex map, but 
the vertex map would probably go in here. Let me just just think for a minute. Um, so that's pulling. I'm just looking at this position because I think we can influence which way it's going to kind of pull the pieces out. And the other thing, just to um, while I'm doing this, is there's a thick, thickness map here. If you drop in your vertex map into that, what it does, and this might come in really useful for certain things, is it takes the thickness off of the plane and it only applies it on the vertex map. Okay, so only where it's yellow will be thicker. And that's what that's doing with the thick and there. The vertex map on the thickness map is saying, so we could really kind of crank this area up here, look, and say, you know, I mean, it might not be good for this, but it, I, I've got some, you know, some other things I'm going to do very shortly where I think this will be really useful. Um, it's kind of like damaging the the surface in, in this area, isn't it? And, it? and it's adding in all of this extra extra matter is kind of being used. Um, so yeah, we could probably use that. It might work, especially if we can if we play around with this a little bit. Might be able to get some really nice looking things going on. So just quickly then, that, that's the effect of, of cutting. Right, we're you know using thicken, using this, the mesher, and then obviously using vertex maps and and this decay, which which keeps this line on. So that, that's that's the principle. But I just want to show you quickly, just before I go, um, is where we can apply some of these materials. So if we just go to the asset browser and let's type in metal, and let's go materials, and let's grab something like stainless steel, which is quite nice. Just uh, double click on stainless steel, load that into here. Now, if we put stainless steel on, now we want to put these onto, onto the thicken, not onto the metal, but so we put it on the thicken. And then when we click on thicken, we can go to selections here and we can say that we want the shell, which is actually going to be the this inner part here, this subdivision part here, which is. Um, the thickness and then we've got the start cap at the front and then the end cap at the back so we can actually select all of these pieces and these are our reference codes here so on our material we can say on the front we want stainless steel and the front reference is start cap which is ps so if we go on our material and go to tag where's the selection we can drop in the one that says ps into there okay and then we also need to put another one in because we're using both sides of this. Um, and then this one, we want to drop in the the end cap one, the one that says PC, right? And that'll be on the other material. That's a, well, it's the same material, but we've just got two references on it. So this one will drop in PC. And what that will do is that will just that will give us um, the stainless steel on the front and back. And that leaves us this middle section, this, this thickness part, which can have another treatment on it. So let's say we go for something like silver. So it's a little bit brighter. And we can put that on the thicken. And we can say that that one is going to be the shell, which is PB. So if we click on that, and then we hover over here, which one's PB, that one. Let's drop that in. And now, if we, I don't know if we'll see it because we haven't got a light in the scene. Well, you can see the kind of idea. So let's just put, let's put a quick, um, let's put a light in the scene. Let's use a sky and let's use an HDRI um, light. Uh, something just like a studio, lamps, something like that. Let's just drop that in there, drop it on the sky. And that might give us the effect. There we go. So I don't know if you, can, you probably can't see it too clearly because these are similar things. So let's take let's take a different metal. Let's take gold. Let's just take a gold and put the gold on the front, and also the gold 
on the back. And now, let's have a look. Okay, so now you can see what I'm getting at is we can have this middle bit. Oh no, we could even put the gold on, on the, on the, well, no, we could put the silver on the back, couldn't we? So we've got, oh, that's actually going to affect, yeah, that's going to affect it because we've got that turned on. Um, because of the way the thickness works, it's probably best to have, have, have the same material on the front and back. But as you can see, we have got this wonderful middle part, which is being disturbed now by the blade. Let's actually put silver, a stainless steel on the blade just to, just to make it all look really smart. See, look at that. So now we've got this, this middle bit. And the reason I'll keep going on about this is it really does look good when you've got this two-tone metal with this blade cutting through it, yeah? I think you'll agree, this is quite a nice effect. And all of this kind of molten kind of metal edge, which is quite similar then to what I did here. As you can see, it's got that very similar look. So I'll just do a quick render back on this other one. You see, we've got the we've got a metal treatment that's got all scratches on it and stuff. So and all different bits of fingerprints and smudges. I can show you all this. This is all in the um, the file below at my gun road. You know, with all this extra detail in and how I got all this up, you know to work on here. Um, that's all in there. Um, but that's really the same principle of what we've got here. It's exactly the same idea. This is just a quicker version. Okay. So I hope this all makes sense. I hope you're going to have loads of fun with this. There are so many things you can do with this um, this technique, you know, of like breaking up, um, you know, breaking up different materials, slashing them, break, you know, like surfaces on the road or something. I was going to do something like that where it breaks up all the tarmac and then it adds all this material into it. So really nice effect. Okay, use this get Wolverine, get like a samurai sword, anything, anything that cuts and slices and slashes and, you know, start to get creative with it. But that's that's the idea. You just use a volume mesher, some smoothing, a thicken, and then um, the the vertex map with the decay on to give you this, this line. So I hope you, hope it's made sense. If you've got any questions on this technique, uh, please leave me a comment below. Um, any suggestions for things that rip, tear or shred, again, leave it in the comments below. So please like, comment, subscribe if you want to, so you can see all this content delivered straight to your phone. Um, I would love for you to do that. That'd be really good. So my name is Mike from Fit Animation. Take care. Goodbye for now.